So yeah, yesterday's snapshot was uh, a pretty remarkable one, right? Introducing the armor trim, you've got 11 different patterns, there's 10 different templates, and you can customize the look of your armor. There's, there's of course a video on my channel if you missed any of this and you wanna go catch up and find out what all the fuss is about. Now, I think, uh, I think they made a really bold move that's gonna resonate with a lot of players. But at the same time, I don't, I don't think it's the best implementation of the idea possible. It feels like Moyang gave us a little more leeway than they usually would with customization. I feel like they like to rein back things a little bit when they let us customize stuff and uh, make it make it so that you've got to really work for something, right? This time though, it felt like they just gave us a whole ton of options. You know, you can really slap on a bunch of color and really kind of like go for it in terms of making something quite visually distinct and wild. And I got to admit, there's some combinations in there that look really good. Some colors look great on particular armor. There's some shapes and whatnot that you can create out of that that look pretty cool. There's also some that really don't mix together, like diamond with redstone on it just looks a bit garish, you know? Two, two kind of like bold colors that are clashing with one another and they don't really look so great. And the patterns you can choose as well have this problem where it's like, they, they, they look good when they're more subtle, when they're more formed. And a lot of the patterns just do things like add a couple of stripes on the side here and there and don't really have a lot of personality, should I say. I, I just found them to be a little, I don't know, like filling in the boxes. Hey, we're going to have 10 of these, right? Whereas maybe they should have stuck with a few less, made it a little bit more limited. Mouthy says it was kind of overwhelming, to be honest. I think it will be overwhelming if you want to be completionist about it. Like if you look at it like, oh, I want to make, you know, a complete set of armor. And then you're like, oh, what about those customizations? Then all of a sudden it gets a little bit, oh, there's a lot to choose from here, right? But in general, I don't think the options are that bad. What I think the problem is, is that the way it's currently balanced, it's designed to encourage you to explore. They've done what I wish they would do more often, which is to look at how different aspects of a new feature can tie into different parts of the game. That is really clear. They've distributed the colors across a bunch of different materials to give them more uses. I think they've done the right job there by making it so that you have to travel around the world to get all of the different parts. But then all of the loot tables just give you a 5% chance. So you can go to something like a, a woodland mansion or a pillager outpost, and you're gonna have a rough time. You're gonna have to visit quite a few of those, right? Then there's something like a shipwreck. You're gonna have to go to about 20 shipwrecks before you get one. I feel like this could have been balanced a little better and maybe be a little less cruel. And then once you've got it, to duplicate it, it costs seven diamonds. So the priciness of it to me sort of says this customization is like a one-time thing for your prime armor. And it does help make diamonds a little more valuable again. They, they've sort of become, I don't know, with things like mending, they've become less valuable because it's so easy to hold onto them all and, and keep them and, you know, keep your armor. So they've added a little value there. But I still think it's going to be quite grindy for a lot of players to actually, you know, get all of that stuff together. They're too rare. Any multiplayer server it will be impossible to find any customizations, says Taco Terrorizer. No, 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 no. Let me correct you. They're not rare. They're difficult to find. They're, they're not rare because they can be duplicated. In multiplayer communities, this is really good because it'll encourage people communicating, working together, trading, that kind of stuff. You'll be able to recreate them for seven diamonds. But... I don't know, like, I feel like the reusability of it, maybe one diamond each time, there's something about the way you reuse it that feels clunky to me. I feel like you should probably put the template into the smithing table and then pay a price for using it. Like maybe one diamond each time you use it. The chances were different in Sliced Lime's video. Or was it worded differently and I misunderstood? Well, Sliced obviously works at Mojang, so he'll have the details. I always like to watch his videos after I've done mine, I just haven't had the time yet to see if there's any things that I'll need to correct you about next time, so uh, he's a really reliable source of information. The thing is though, I looked at the loot tables and ran them through an analyzer and they were saying 4.8% each and every time. Now I don't know if something's changed in the way that these loot tables work that means that's incorrect. That could be the case. Or sometimes I've noticed there will be things in the changelog or things that Slice Lime knows about that are supposed to be in the update but actually aren't. This might have been one of those things like someone maybe was supposed to go and uh, change the numbers and just forgot to do it. So that might be why there's some different numbers out there. Either way though, it'll change, right? Like it, this isn't permanent, they'll listen to feedback and uh, they'll make adjustments accordingly. So we can probably guess that it's not gonna stay this way, 
but I really think that they need to make it a little easier to sort of work with the duplication system. Maybe not duplicating them through crafting, as I suggested, but maybe just paying a cost for using the template. I think that would better handle the uh, increase in price. And I think the increased price is a good thing. Diamonds need a little, a little something to make them more valuable again. As for netherite, I think their reasons for making it more difficult to have are good. Some players will be upset now that their netherite stuff is going to be much harder to earn. But I do think once you get netherite, you know, you are really, really strong. It does make sense to nerf it a little bit. So I think the balancing there made sense. But the exploration stuff, really great idea to give people more reasons to explore. But it just, I don't think it should be that grindy. Seems like it's all too grindy at the moment. Anyway, my biggest qualm is with the, the overlays on the armor themselves. There were just too many that didn't look right. You know, if you had, like I said, diamond armor with the red patterns, and sometimes they're a big, bold circle. I think they should have perhaps gone for more, let's say, let's say like artistically driven. Uh, for me, I feel like the way I would have approached it is maybe constrain the amount of options that you have. So rather than having this big variety of shapes and colors, it's more like there's a, a leaner selection of things that really fit together, like nice trims that suit a particular type of armor. That would have been my approach because there's a lot of combinations you can make that just look noisy and ugly. And I don't know, like some players will like that. Some pe players will like a lot of contrast and I'd probably be like, oh, I don't like that combination really. But, you know, it gets a little subjective and personal at that point. But I really do think there's something to perhaps just constraining the amount of options and making sure that like everything's a bit more consistent with how Minecraft looks. As it currently stands, you can just make some really kind of like haphazard looking collections. Uh, MonPJC says the trims have their own PNG files, so can be tweaked. Yeah, so data packs, great idea. Clearly they've once again created this feature and thought, you know, what about map makers and custom content? Really good when they think through the different aspects of the game and make sure that these features are going to be sort of supported at different levels. I like that. So all of the data pack stuff, good. H however, like, again, you know, not everyone plays with that though, right? So what is Hermitcraft going to do? Because for the longest time, we've wanted to be able to customize armor. One of the ideas I had, I've always had, and probably Probably many other hermits have had is to create like your own custom armor shop one of these ideas ruminating in my mind is like season five the gaming district and like what about being like a games master who builds games and gives out players tickets for prizes and the prizes were like these tools we can do it with tools we can make custom tools now so like you can really take advantage of that but we can't do it for armor and if these were to be the prizes they're all too personal and they're very pricey i would not feel comfortable putting decorations on on the armor at this price and sort of treating them like they're valuable rarities because any other player can replicate what I did but also they can pick exactly what they want. So I had this, when I was looking at it, or I had this idea in my head of like, this almost suits this idea of being able to open up like a custom armor shop. But when you think about it, you have to put in a lot to have your custom armor shop. And then other players are gonna come along and think, well, that's not quite how I do mine. So, you know, I'm not gonna buy your one. I'm just gonna create my own. So it doesn't really like work for that. It's a very specific use case, but it's probably one that would be very appealing to a lot of players, I'd imagine, especially in, um, multiplayer communities. Seems to me that there could be levels of expense, seven diamonds for the chest, cheapest of combinations, and then growing expense for more rare combinations. When you say combination, there's only, I think, material, color, and then shape. That's the only combination, really. Like there isn't like a, a series like you could add multiple templates and then unlock some like super rare pattern, which again could be like another really cool way to make it more interesting. If you had a slimmer set of things, maybe there's a little bit of a tech tree there. That's probably not very uh, Minecrafty though to get that complicated. Mom PJC says, had a look at the new data pack structure and how it's implemented, was thinking now that we are seeing colors and textures being applied dynamically, like with signs, banners, leather, and now armor, it looks like it could be possible to apply the same process to other tools, weapons, mods, or even blocks. This could be very interesting going forward. Yeah, sounds like maybe there's some infrastructure there in place to enable these systems to be repurposed and reused elsewhere in the game. It is one of those things that they slowly chip away at each update. They try and um, get more and more sort of customizability at a data pack level in for players, which is really great. Uh, I've really enjoyed that aspect of watching this game evolve. Skyfighter says to make a full set of armor, a sword, an axe, two picks, a shovel, and a hoe costs 70 diamonds for the upgrades. 40 ancient debris for 10 ingots, and I'm assuming you might trade with villagers for the armor. Otherwise, it costs 108 diamonds to craft everything. Dang, dang, that is that is good to know. 
I'm going to copy that message. <laughs> I want to make a, a note about that somewhere. Let me just throw that on my post stream notes. Yeah, that was something I wanted to do myself at some point, sort of like math out. Okay, like now that this is here and it affects netherite, um, how much is it actually going to cost? Sounds like a lot, right? Dracua 266, maybe templates shouldn't be consumed when used. That's what I think they should do. I think you should pay a cost to use the template, pay a diamond or whatever to use it. Begley says, I think the netherite grind is kind of anti-casual because like it's fine from an SMP perspective where we're all doing big grinds. So it's just like, oh, another one on the list. Like for the casual player who may have found netherite already a grind to do full armor and tools. That grind may have gotten to a level where they won't bother anyone. If I can make a counter argument, because I kind of agree, I think once you put players into a category, it's easy to look at the game from their perspective. But what I would say is that you can play the game with diamond armor. You can get diamond armor very easily from villagers as you can all the books. So you can get to that kind of pretty good for the end game stage with just villagers and whatnot alone. But if you are a grinder, if you are someone who like plays on the big level, those netherite tools will get you just a little bit further. They'll be a little more useful for you. What if the template breaks and then you need to repair it with diamonds like other gear? That's actually a really cool idea, like it has a bunch of uses. Yeah, yeah, I think that's a really good suggestion, Maldi. That's a great way for then them not to have to adjust the smithing table, right? Like to add in an extra layer where you got to pay for stuff. Like that's going to be awkward. So pretty good idea, I think. Dev Chimera says, this is my take. I find the netherite upgrade now too big of a difficulty step for casual players. I mean, people already have a hard time raiding bastions with netherite armor. Yeah, that's probably a good point. As I said earlier, like you can get all the diamond gear as a casual player pretty easy. Maybe they need to make bastion remnants a little easier. Yeah, it's definitely a good point. I think they've increased the value of netherite in one way, but they need to perhaps make netherite less value in another, which is probably difficulty, as I think the grind is worthy of the reward of being able to mine so many like additional blocks with your tools. I think that's a really worthy uh, sort of response for the grind. Cloud CTR one says, is upgrading a shovel to netherite even worth it with a new system? Seven diamonds for a minimal upgrade when you can just make another shovel with one diamond. There's a good argument there, but remember you've got enchantments and then you've got the convenience of just knowing um, that your pick, or sorry, your shovel lasts a little longer. But also, don't forget um, that, you know, fire resistance, your items aren't going to get destroyed by lava. That's a really powerful part of netherite. And again, an argument for why it's so uh, good in the nether, right? Like we just said a second ago about bastion remnants and whatnot, right? So yeah, the balancing goes both ways all bit here. The guy with long hair says, would be nice if ancient debris could be made more common, making acquiring netherite blocks easier to obtain without doing the same for armor and tools. Yeah, it does. It's a bit annoying when there's a block in the game that looks really, really nice and it is just the most grindy thing ever. I, I would like to see that block be a little easier to access. Anyway, I think they did lots of things really well with the snapshot, the way they rolled it out, the way they thought about the features. Just maybe the, the armor trims themselves, I think, left a little to be desired. Bit noisy. I would have preferred a more coherent vision of uh, of like a bunch of styles that complement each other. Because right now they just sort of feel like some pretty straightforward patterns and some are clearly way better than others, right? Way, way better. Anyway, that's just my that's just my two cents on the matter, I guess, as the old saying goes. Did you enjoy the clip? Then subscribe for more because my second channel is where we post clips as well as the VODs of the live streams that I do on twitch.tv slash which many of the clips come from. Anyway, thanks for subscribing. I'll see you in the next one.